You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to take because I am a thief. Cause every good and perfect gift comes from the Father who I... All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast. This is When Christian Speak Talk Radio. This is Friday Night Joy segment. Amen. I'm Reverend Ray. Amen. We're going to continue. Amen. Where we left off from last Friday. Amen. With uh, um, expectations based on the promises of God. This will be part three of the series that we have been working on. Amen. And we are excited. Let me see if I can get my tablet to work here um, about what God is going to do. Amen. I want to remind you of our weekly broadcast of History Bound and Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams. It's every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Declaring the finished work for Reverend Pat Thir- Randall. It's Thursday at 12 noon. Of course, this, the day is Friday, so I do Friday Night Joy at Always at 7 p.m. Sometimes I have guests come on or interviewing people. So if you have a desire to be on the broadcast with me, get in contact with me at wouldn'tquestionspeak at gmail.com or go to our Facebook um, pages and send me a message. Amen. Amen. Um, um, Bread of Life. With, 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 uh, I do also the Bread of Life. And it's on Sundays at 7 p.m., but it's the first and the fourth Sundays of the month, the first and the fourth Sunday of the month. Challenge Change with Pastor Paul Morgan is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Monthly broadcast. Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones is every first Monday at 7 p.m. The Bold and the, Bold and the Beautiful with Reverend Novina Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, and Minister Jordana Cunningham. It's every second Saturday at 10 a.m. Adoration with the Evangelist Louis McElwain. It's every third Monday of the month. Amen. At 7 p.m. Marriage Takeover, which is coming up this Sunday, amen, uh, in January. Marriage Takeover, the, the Body of One, with Reverend Eric and Reverend Tamika Thompson. It's every third Sunday at 7 p.m. They're doing an awesome job with Marriage Takeover. One of our, our newest broadcasts is R3, Real Life, Real Men, Real Talk, with myself, Ray Rose, Austin Green, Cleophus Malone, and Antonio Mitchell. And we just added another brother, Tyrone Rose, um, to the mix which is um, every second Sunday at 7 p.m. Amen. We just had a group discussion last Sunday. Amen. A week of prayer, of course, we got to have prayer. It's midday glory prayer. Reverend Gwen Dixon is every Wednesday at 1 p.m. This is a free conference call number. The, the dialing number is 641-715-3580. That's as code. It's 732-499. And as always, don't forget to check us out at whenchristianspeak.com. Amen. We got a lot of information up there. And check out our Facebook page of When Christians Speak, our Twitter page of When Christians Speak. <laughs> We're all over the place, man. We got a lot of uh, social media sites out there. We also have a page called Christians Against Suicide and, and Depression that deals with a lot of people that are going through um, depression, and we try to uh, post encouraging remarks and encourage, and also point post telephone numbers where you can get help at and encourage you to get what, what the help that is needed. Amen. So we do that. So we do a little bit, a little bit of some of everything. Amen. So we bless God for the different ministries that we are involved with. Amen. Um, listen to us on iTunes Radio, uh, iTunes, um, AHA Radio. You can check us out on Spreaker.com, uh, Podbean, um, of course, Blog Talk Radio, and just to name a few, and and um, just, just, it's quite a few uh, different platforms that we are broadcasting on. So we thank God for the His uh, allowing us to be able to speak a word on this type of format. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get in and say prayer, and we're getting right directly into the word of God. Amen. Father God, we want to come and say today, just thank you. Thank you for today, for truly this is the day that you have made. We thank you for another another Friday, God, of, the, of this new year, 2019. You know everything, God, that will take place in this year. You know our ups and our downs, our tears and our frowns. You know our disappointments, but God, you also know our joy. 
you know that the joy, and we know that the joy of the Lord is the strength of his people. So all that we face and all that we're going through, God, you are giving us strength. If we keep our mind, keep our hearts in on you. The children of the whatever storms that we're facing, Lord, so we pray today, God, for those people, those government employees, those contractors, those uh, that are being affected by this government shutdown. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you provide the need that is needed for them and you will show them an excellent way, which is you, that you are the one that can change anything. We pray for this government that we live under right now, God. A government at times they have that people agree or disagree with God. But we pray today, Lord Jesus, that you will bring forth a peace that passes all understanding. That you will bring forth your word and your gospel to even the government, Lord Jesus, that you have control of, Lord Jesus, that that you have put in place, God. We'll begin to understand who we are and that we all belong to you, and we all been bought with the price. That we, that even the, from the president to the senate to the congress, God, will begin to know who Jesus Christ is, the Lord and Savior. We pray today, God, that we be able, the government be able to sit down and talk out their differences, God, without threats and without being the bully and without calling names and without all the craziness, God. That He might care for the people, God. That it's the people that are hurting. During this time, Lord Jesus, we do thank you in advance, God. We pray for this broadcast of When Christmas Speak Talk Radio. We pray, God, that you would continue to open up windows and doors, Lord Jesus, that, that will push us or prepare us into the into the ministry that you've called us to be. We pray that we will be sincere, that we will be uh, 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 keep our, our, our head down and faced towards you, God, and on our knees and praying and interceding for the people that need your guidance and the people that need your help and the people that need a blessing or people that need to be saved or, or sanctified and or people that even need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We pray today, God, that we will be that voice calling out in the wilderness, God, prepare he the, the way of the Lord. We'll be the voice calling on the wilderness to let people know that there is a bomb in Gilead. That we'll be the voice, Lord Jesus, every every host that's on this show, God, every from, uh, every guest that comes on this show, we will be the voice, God, that you have called us to be in this day and time. That we'll be able to speak, God, but not just on when Christmas be talk with y'all. There are many platforms out there that are spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many platforms out there, God, that are beginning to help those that are in trouble, that are going through depression, that are going through financial issues, that are going through the, um, um, sickness, that are going through diseases, God. We pray, God, that they might find out, Lord Jesus, where their help is at, and their help is in you. We pray, God, that we, the people of God, that, you have, well, that are called by your name, may be the salt, light, and power that you have called us to be in this day and time. We pray to the Holy Spirit that you, Lord Jesus, will begin to cause us to come back into a right relationship with you. That you will begin to cause us, Lord Jesus, to understand the time and the season that we live in and that the hand is writing on the wall. That you allow us to be bold. That you allow us to be, but you allow us to do everything, everything that we do out of love for my brothers and my sisters, God. That we will love our neighbors and we love ourselves. That we will love our enemies as we love ourselves. That we will love those that persecute us and those that talk about it as we love ourselves. In 2019, God, in this month of January, we need you. We need you more than ever. We need your Holy Spirit to come in like a mighty Russian wind and you set the atmospheres from building the building to church to church to heart to heart. You know the needs of your people Your people are better than anyone else, God. So we pray today, God, that you will come into the temple, Lord Jesus, our heart, and make our stony hearts flesh again and cause us to come to walk after your statutes and cause us to worship you and cause us to glorify your name. And if there be anything in us, Lord Jesus, from the young to the old and from the old to the young, Lord Jesus, that you are not pleased with, we pray that you will bring not only correction, but you bring healing from any of the demonic forces that are affecting us, God. We pray, God, that we will spend more time on our face and less time talking about each other. 
We pray, God, today, Lord Jesus, as I speak across all the different, this airway today, across well, all the, to all the different nations that might be listening, listening in different countries, God, that they will know, Lord Jesus, that you love them, no matter where they're from, and uh, no matter how they grew up, no matter the color of their skin, no matter whether they're rich or whether they're poor, God. But we pray today for salvation. For we know that salvation is free. We know that what you did for us on the cross, Jesus, you did it because you love us. So we pray today, God, that you will begin to restore those things that the kinky worm and the locust and the grasshopper and the palmer worm has eaten, God. Begin to restore those things that we thought could never be fixed again. Begin to restore broken relationships and broken promises, God. Begin to restore, God. The healing in families and with the fathers and mothers and sons and daughters and daughters and and, and and fathers, God. We pray, Lord Jesus, wherever there is something that is not right, that you will send your mending grace to mend promises back together today. This is our expectation in 2019. That even in the midst of chaos, God, that you are still working things out in our favor. That even in the midst of storms, Lord Jesus, that you are still working things out in our favor. We pray today, God, for every family all across the world, not just in the United States, but all across the world, (coughs) that there may be a great awakening to take place. We will forever give you all the praise. We will forever give all the glory and all the honor. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Again, I want to welcome you to the broadcast of Friday Night Joy. I'm Reverend Ray. I'm your host tonight. Amen. Um, my topic is expectation based on the promises of God. This is part three. We're going to try to close this out this week. Amen. So that we'll be able to move on to some something else. We got some great guests coming up in, in February, and we are excited about what God is going to do for the month of February. Amen. And um, again, I, look, I want to get a shout out to all my, all the different hosts that's on with Christian speaking. Again, I want to say to them, uh, public, public, I, I'm messing the word up, y'all, but publicly that I thank God for every single last one of you, and um, also to the, every listener, whoever you may be, those that share these different posts. I thank God for you. You are in my prayers. You, I know you have your private prayers that don't want else to know about itself for you and God. So I pray that my Lord and my Savior Jesus Christ will begin to answer your your prayers that He will come and see about you. Amen. I want to encourage you today. Amen. And that's the whole part of this series that we're doing, the expectation based on the promises of God. Because the thing that we got to understand, God has made some some promises to us. You know. He has made some strong promises from the since the beginning of time, since the day that you were created, while you was yet in your mother's womb, there were some promises that was made for you and I. And sometimes in life, we don't take advantage of things that uh, that are just set for us, you know, that are set for us. There was a, a preacher that had passed away, and uh, he was talking about he didn't want to leave any his blessing in the graveyard. You know, because the graveyard are full of, of potential blessings that we miss out on. And I'm like that. I don't want to, and I, I, for, even for myself and even for you, I don't want you to leave any blessings in while you're in this land of the living. Anything and everything that God has in store and set for you, I, my desire for you is to have it. Okay? Because I care for you and I love you just like that. The way that Christ cares for you. And then, so there, so there are many promises that God has got for them. That's right there. They're for the taking. No doubt. When I think about the promises of God, and I think about them. Not even in my notes yet, but just bear with me, Amen. I think about the fact that the children of Israel probably could have gotten to 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 the land of the promise from Egypt a lot quicker and everything. But there were some lessons that need to be learned. See what I'm saying? And there were some things that had to come out of them. That um, and everything, and there's some trust and the belief and faith in God and everything. You know, it's amazing when I look at all the things that the seven plagues wasn't enough to convince them that hey, God is God of uh, of all. It wasn't enough. But we can say the same same thing because God works miracles in our life all the time, and 
and, and, we, and he healed us, he delivered us, we prayed, he answered prayer, and it seems like it's never enough for us. So we ain't no different, really. We're still saved flesh. The good thing that we have in our favor, we have the, for those that know Jesus Christ as Lord, they have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and everything. But even then, we need to activate it, and it needs to be put to use, and we need to let the Holy Spirit have its way in our life. There are many promises that God has for you and me and for those that want. It's there, even for the sinners. You know, for those that don't know Jesus Christ the Lord, there's a promise that God has for them. Just believe in Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, John three sixteen. You know, believe in him, shall be saved. It's a promise that you don't have to live the life that you live the way you do. Amen. I think what I, I wanted to do is a mess of I'm looking them through my notes there, and I'm, I'm just I because I had collected. I told you last week, I, last uh, Friday, I collected like a ton of scriptures about the promises of God. So I want to do that, but I also uh, want to do a quick review because this is probably be the last. Uh, well, I don't know I might do one more could fill a month out. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how things go. Amen. But I want to do some um, quick reviews and talk about some of the things that I had said earlier, amen, even though I, I really prefer that you go back and listen to um, part three of this, amen. Um, and you can find all of those, all of them on, on Blog Talk Radio, or you can go to any of the other platforms that we're on. And if, or if you like, I can send it to you um, in an MP3 format. If you desire that, I can send it to you. Just let me know. Get hit. Um, um, connect with me on whenchristianspeak at gmail.com, okay? And one of the things that we had started off with a couple of weeks ago, we talked about the, the, we know what God, we know what God can do, you know? We have, some of us has witnessed miracles after miracles after miracles, time after time, after again, God has made a way out of no way, you know, what the enemy meant for evil, God has turned all those things, those words that we said, we so we know. And stuff, but one of the scriptures that I read a couple of weeks ago was coming out of Ephesians chapter three, verse twenty, and it says, "Now to him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, unto him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end." He said, "Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think." Promises that we can't even imagine. There's a song that I can only imagine. You know, there are promises of God that are, and, and blessing that are, and healing and, and strength, you know, and of God that we haven't even, even just, we can't even imagine. He said, I see, could, could do, <coughs> excuse me, I see the abundantly all that we ask or think according to the power that working in us, according to the power that working in us. And then what power are they talking about? They're talking about the Holy Spirit. They're talking about your faith. They're talking about your relationship or your intimacy that you have with Christ. You know, and to Him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus, world without end. Amen. I mean, another scripture that we had, we had talked about that came out of Hebrews chapter six, verse thirteen, where it said, "For when God made promise to Abraham, He, because He could swear by no one greater, He swear by Himself." When God makes a promise, he can't swear by nobody because there is nobody greater than him. He swore by himself. Y'all, that there is a promise. And you, you got to remember, and this is this also to people that are going through depression. A lot of people right now, because of what's going on in our in the world system and, and the government, a lot of people are going through some major stuff, um, emotions right now, not sure what to do. And everything, and how they're gonna pay their mortgage, you know, how they're gonna feed the, the family, you know. And, uh, and, and, and but when the, the Bible says that God made a promise to Abraham because he could swear by nobody, greater. he swore by he swore by himself. That 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 includes you. That God's promises, you know, are, are true for you wherever you might be. Even if you don't even know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, He has His arms. His, Jesus has his arms stretched wide open for you. That everything you face in this world, you don't have to face it alone. That you don't have to face it alone. Amen. In Galatians chapter 29, if you promise me Abraham and heirs according to the promise. If you be if you be Christ, in other words, if you belong to Christ, 
You are a part of Abraham's seed, and you're heir to the throne. Amen. Amen. You're heir to the front on the throne. Our exaltation is based on faith, based based on the word of God. Exaltation based on the promises. Our exaltation based is based on faith. It says Hebrews chapter eleven verse one through three says, "Now the faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things not seen. For it that by it the elders obtain a good report. Report through faith we understand." Understand that the world was framed by the word of God, so the things which are seen were not made of things which do, do appear. Can you imagine our expectation in Christ should be at its highest? Our faith in God, man, should be at its highest. You know, and even if we're at the point that we don't know what to do or don't know where to go, and we're at a point of despair, you know, that uh, we have, we're talking with my sister, and we were talking about, um, um, oh, what's the word? Um, I can't think of the word. We were talking about faith, you know, even at that point, that, that measure of faith that we to kick in, you know, that measure of faith should kick in, amen, you know. The, the promises sometimes is long coming, you know. You know the, the, the Bible said they, those that wait upon the Lord, He should renew their strength, right? Sometimes you know, there's a waiting process. process. And God said that He's going to do it. Look at Abraham, forty-two generations. The promises of Abraham, forty-two generations, man, until Jesus came on the scene, but He's going to do it. He's going to do it, and sometimes. You know, um, we got just got to wait. We got to endure hardship as a good soldier. You know, our expectation that it's not going to be like this always. The trouble doesn't last always. So there's a season, a time and a season for everything. The sun, everything has a, a time, thing has a season. Okay? Everything has a time and everything has a season. Okay? Um, I want to read, we, we talked about the woman with the issue of blood and uh, how she um, had an expectation that if she can touch the hem of his garment, that she uh, she will be made whole. You know, she had that expectation, you know, that I can just touch. No doubt she'd heard of Jesus. I don't know whether she had seen the miracles, working, but no doubt she heard about it. She had that kind of faith. If I could just touch his garment, the hem, I think about the garment, but Jesus, but just the hem, a little piece of strain, expectation. Your expectation for 20, uh, 2019 should be just that, even if it's just a, even if it's barely can be seen by the naked eye. <laughs> you know, even if, you can, even if you can barely see it by the naked eye, there comes a point, and I'm speaking to myself, that you just got to believe God and trust God that it shall come to pass. Because he knows your heart. He knows everything that you're facing. He know he know where you are. You know he know what you dreamed last night. You know he know everything that there is about you. And man, I want to. Um, I was talking uh, earlier. I, I think I was another a uh, couple of weeks. I was talking about expectation, expectation, anticipation. There's an anticipation that we should have as believers. There's an anticipation that we have that, yeah, it's going to work it out. You know, and people be looking at us all crazy because they see us going through H E double hockey sticks <laughs> and everything. And they get, we still have a smile on our face. We still have joy. You know, why? Why? How is that possible? How can you have joy when everything in your world is turned upside down and, and then you uh, go through a government shutdown and you don't know what the next check is coming or when you're even going back? How can you possibly have joy? There's an anticipation that he said that I never read, uh, uh, had the righteous begging for bread and never left them begging for bread. I never left them begging for the seed begging for bread. I never forsaken the righteous and never had that seed begging for bread. There's anticipation to know that God got me. Yeah, that God got me. There's anticipation and an expectation in knowing that he's going to make a way out of nowhere. That he's going to provide for me. 
that he's going to provide for you and your families and everything. You know, that he's going to work it out in your favor. The Bible talks about how the wealth of the wicked are, made, are laid out for the just or laid up out for the righteousness. But you have people just coming to you, giving, you say, because they know that you're going through a hard time. It's like, let me, let me bless you with this. These things are happening right now as we speak. You know, you have agencies that you never even heard of come in knocking on your door and say, hey, look, I got a basket of food to give you right here because I know that you're a government employee. You, look, look, check out what's going on. You got major companies um, feeding people and stuff like I think it was Whole Foods had a um, spaghetti night or something like that for, for people that, was, that, 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 that needed to eat. Government workers were laid out. You got all these things going on. All these things going on. You got people starting businesses and everything that they never would have started if they, they hadn't been laid out, laid laid off from work or furloughed. These things are taking place. Expectations and promises of what God can do. You know, expectations and anticipation of what the things that what God is doing in your life. Starting businesses. You know, God probably, some people, God probably told them to leave that, that government job a long time ago. And start a church. <laughs> I'm messing with somebody. Go start a church. You know, go start a ministry. Leave that government job. Yeah, you because know, that money is good in some cases. You know, you don't go nowhere. It's a, it's a safety net. But then here you are now that you ain't working. So what God does is that now is a come time to, be, to have that kind of faith, that unseen, that faith. <laughs> That faith the, uh, 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 the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things that are not seen. You know, you don't see it, but you believe that God's going to do it. You have an expectation, amen, that he's going to do it. Amen. Let me, let's me let move on. Amen. And amen. Um, and we talked about this a little bit, yeah, about um, the, the lame man that was laying at the, the gate, um, at the gate of the temple called Beautiful, they had they said about he had been lame since his at birth. When he looked on Peter and them, he, there was an expectation that Peter was going to give him some money. He was looking for the wrong thing, that temporary fix. And a lot of times, you know, we're looking for something that's temporary. But Peter was trying to give him something that was eternal, <laughs> that would change his whole life complete with the, the, around the, to the point where it was holistically spoken. Peter was trying to give him something that was holistically complete in him, that not only took care of his ability not to walk, which is physical, but also changes even his mental state. And then also change his spiritual side up to the point. The Bible says he leaped for joy. He leaped for joy, y'all. He was leaping for joy. He had never leaped before. You know, he had never stood up before. But here's this man that, you know, had an anticipation, but it wasn't complete. It was on a partial thing. But once um, um, Peter grabbed him by the hand and lifted him up and everything, the Bible said he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. Man, are you kidding me? Talk, come to completion of the promises and the purpose that God had in his life. Completion. You know, he was ready to go on to the next minute. Can you imagine the rest of his life? He was a living, walking testimony of the goodness and the grace of our almighty God. Not Peter, but what God did. Can you imagine that? He every time somebody says, he was like a Lazarus that had been raised from the dead. Every time somebody see Lazarus, then people was like, I can't believe I know he was dead for three days. Can you imagine the testimony? There's a in some of our cases and things that we are facing now is a testimony that that's part of the process that we're gonna knock the socks off some people that might be going through the same thing, might be struggling, might not know what to do. But there's a testimony that's being birthed in you today. But it's all part of the process. And it's all by, based on the outcome. The outcome is a promise. It's a fulfillment of what God has in store for you. Whether it's to write that book, you know, whether it's to, to put out that music CD, whether it's to start a ministry, you know, whether it's to even to go to, to the hedges and the highways and come, become an evangelist or missionary or do some trips overseas, whatever, even if it's just to go to the schools and, and be a counselor or whatever, you just don't know, you know, the expectations and the promises that God has for you. 
I want to um, I'm going to read some of the scriptures that I didn't get a chance to read last week. We got. I want to start at, uh, and um, this is coming out of Second Chronicles chapter seven, verse fourteen. And it's a familiar voice you, when you hear a lot of preaching. The people use it. it. Says, "If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven." And I will forgive their sin, sin and heal their land. He said, if my people, he ain't talking to everybody. He's talking about those that are called by his name. He tell you who he's called. He's talking about. He said, it's called by, by his name. In other words, that have had their name written in the book of life, though, and have born again believers that have such a Jesus Christ. And he's talking to you. Well, humble himself. He's telling the people of God. He's telling the church. Let's make it plain. He's telling the church. You know, the body. He, if you humble yourself and you pray, he's giving them instructions, y'all, of the promises that he's going to do. You know, if you humble yourself, you know, and, and pray and seek my face, four things, and turn from your wicked ways, humble, humble, them, humble yourself, pray, seek his face, and turn. <laughs> Those four, four categories, humble, pray, seek, and turn. If you do those four things, he said, then I will hear from heaven. You're talking about, and, and, and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. He said, I will hear from heaven. Hear from heaven. Hear from heaven. And that's what he wants to do with us. Because remember I said earlier that there's a lot of promises that God has and stuff, but it's up to us. It's, up to, it's on us. He, he look. Even Jesus even said it. You know that, that, that those that believe on Him shall be saved. They believe in the name of Jesus. They shall be saved. They confess their sins, believe in our heart, and, com- and, uh, and confess with their mouth. The same shall be saved. But guess what? It's on us. The promises. The promise is you be saved. But it's on you. It's on me. It's on me to make a decision. It's on me on what I do next. Amen. You know, um, in, the, in Deuteronomy, he told Joshua, he said, the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Promises, y'all. We talked about this. I think I read this last week. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged. And Jeremiah, uh, for me, one of my fav- favorite scriptures, he says, for I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hope in the future. Promise, promises. I want to, because I don't think I have this in, in my notes, but it talks about expected end. So just bear with me for a minute. Amen. Because I want to look this up. Because um, this is one of my favorite scriptures about what you know, but I don't. Okay. Let me see if I can find it real quick. I'm not typing it in there. I'm multitasking. <laughs> expected. Yep. Yeah, that says coming, John. That's not the one I'm looking for. Okay. But anyway, in Jeremiah chapter 29, 11, it says, If I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope in the future. You know, and, and that's what this says in the version. This is a different version. Thank God. Thank you, Lord. It says, And expect it is. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace. I don't know why I got the wrong version. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. There's an expected end for you. A promise. A being and amen. Of completeness. Of wholeness. Of healness. Of all these things that God has towards you. There's an expected end that God has towards you. Amen. In, in John chapter 8, verse 33, 36, it says, so if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. And when God does a thing, when Jesus does a thing, it's done, baby. It's complete. It's finished. There is no ism, schism, doubt about it. You can take it to the bank. You can put it in the vault, whatever. You know, in fact, the, the, the bank in the vault can't hold the blessings that God has to store for you. They can't hold it in a way. So the best thing can, that we can do is bow on our face before him, lay prostrate and glorify and magnify the Lord our God. In, um, in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, it says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer and believe that you have received it, it will be yours. Promises. Whatever you ask, whatever I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, 
You know, there's the word prayer. Believe that you receive it, it will be yours. You know, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, again, he said, Just have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. <laughs> you know, Joshua, and that complies for us, y'all. Be strong and courageous. Put away, uh, look, I'm going to read the rest of the scripture. But look, go ahead, put your weeping rag away, put it down, put it away. In fact, hide it from you. <laughs> but he said, be strong and be courageous. You know, you know, be strong and be courageous about this thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Everything it looks dark and dreary, you know, and everything midnight had come and all this kind of stuff. But my Bible says that we can may endure for a night, but what joy comes in the morning? But guess what? Strong and courageous going to get me to uh, Peter and Paul and both have been, been in prison and things, but through them being strong in the Lord and courageous in God, they continue on. And in some cases, God's freedom, even being in prison. But you, uh, there's nothing too hard for God to do. There is nothing too hard for God to God. He said, he said, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid, nor do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. <laughs> the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, God is with you. God is wherever you go. I mean, no matter what the circumstances, look at Roy Ray talking to you, dude. <laughs> no matter what you feel like, wherever you go. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, and, and uh, we, we got some time. It says, and my God will meet you with all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. God, he will meet all your needs. Psalms 18.3 says, I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise that have been saved from my enemies. <laughs> Expectation and promises. God, you're going to save me from my enemy. You're going to save me from my naysayers. You're going to save me from my backbiter. You're going to save me for those that want to use me, abuse me, and throw me out the trash. You're going to save me. Yes, you are. Because I'm your peculiar treasure. I'm the apple of your eye. Yes, I am. I'm the apple of your eye. You know, I'm the, I'm, I'm the, I'm, we are kings and queens. We are, are joint heirs to the throne of God. We, we've, been, we've been etched into the branch of, of Abraham. And, and therefore, we have the promises of whatever that he promised to Abraham. And so those same promises and everything I've given to me too. They're given to me too. That we should we should be we should be the head and not the tail. Promises, you know. We should be we should be the 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 the, the lenders and not the borrowers. You know. We that's who we are. That's who he said that we are. I didn't. I look. I'm not making any of this stuff up. But that's who he said that we are. And stuff like that. But all those things come with another flip side of that, and that is your relationship that you have with Jesus Christ. And no one can really judge that relationship except for you and God. And you can't really judge it fairly because you give yourself way too much uh, credit. You begin thinking more highly of yourself than you thought you should. <laughs> but that's why we stay on our face before in and, and this place of submission and um, under the authority of an almighty God. God, you have your way with me. You do whatever is needed with me. You lead me. You guide me. You do whatever is needed because I can't do it by myself. I can't do it by myself, God. Um, in um, Psalms uh, 23, 4 says, even though I walk the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I will fear no evil. 23rd Psalms, I will fear no evil. Let's turn there real quick. I don't know what version I got, but this is definitely not what I thought the King James words. I thought they had written in my notes. But I want to turn to Psalms. I want to read that, man. We we got some time, but this is important, right? Okay. So let's say Psalms. 23rd Psalms. The book of division of songs. That's it right here. It is. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness. Guess what? 
for his name's sake, promises, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come on, one more time. I will dwell, y'all. Promises in the house of the Lord forever. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, nowhere in there does it say that trouble will come. Nowhere in there does it say that trials will come. But that says goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. Promises. He's my shepherd. Psalm 34 says, 37, 4 says, take delight in the Lord, and he will give you desires of your heart. And again, that's a, another one that, because uh, um, that's not in a way. Yeah, he will give you desires of your heart. You know, let's read some one. Let's do, here's one. Uh, let's see. Okay, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. It says, and we know that all things work for the good work. Thanks God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. All things work for the good of those who love him. All things. All things. Remember what I said earlier, what the enemy eat for evil what the enemy meant for evil? You know, you know, God <laughs> has turned it and change that whole thing upside down so that it'll be for my good. All things work for my good, for those that love the Lord. You know, Romans um, chapter 10, verses 9, it says, If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, and we say that the God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and, 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 and are saved. Promises. Okay, Philippians um, chapter 4, verse 6 and 7. And it's important that you understand that do not be anxious for anything, but in every situation, by prayer and, um, and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God will transcend all understanding with God, your heart, and your mind in Christ Jesus. Don't be anxious because all this craziness is going on. You know, I sat here one day and I was watching the news and they were talking about it and Peter, they were talking about all the things about Trump and they, all this to shut down. And it really began to grieve by how they showed people coming on TV that were suffering and people was trying to sell their house, have to sell their car, take their kids out of private school. To I mean, they going. They were going to the uh, uh, food banks that had never. They had never been to a food bank in their life, and they were embarrassed by that and stuff like that. You know, all these things that they were going through, and some, some of them was anxious because they didn't know what to do. And I remember talking to the, um, someone, and we were talking about the emotional state of going through and not having for a man and for a woman or whoever not being able to provide for their family. It produces an anxiousness, you know. It produces an anxiousness where people are like, oh, I, I can't, I, I don't know what to do, you know. And there's a panic that comes in and everything. And there's a and then, when that panic comes, it also causes carries, causes worry, which is not a, a God. Worry is not a God and everything, you know. And people that of the world that don't know Jesus, they're 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 panicking. And, they, and we was talking as we were talking, we were saying that this is when people begin to go and do crazy things, you know, to provide for their family, whether it's to knock somebody in the head or to steal from somebody or to lie and to cheat because people do what they got to do and stuff to the, to the utmost and stuff to provide and do whatever, especially if there's kids involved and everything like that. But, but, but we, that are born again and believe that that might ought not to be among us like that because we know in who we believe. We believe Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. So we got to be that salt, light, and power to show people a more excellent way than what they're doing now. We got to be that salt, light, and power. We have to be there because people are, are being stressed out and being pulled and, 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 and they don't know what to, to do down and stuff like that, and they're angry and they're working um, 10 and 12 hours shift and not getting paid for Are you kidding me? Come on. 
You know, this is real life things that people are facing right now. It's that this country, America, and the United States are facing some difficulties and some challenges. People don't want to come, other people to come across the border because of the color of their skin, because they, they all drug dealers. And it's not able to all everybody come across the border and not a drug deal. Okay? But because that mindset and that fear has been put out there in the in, onto the world system and everything, and it's demonic in nature because there's no God in it and everything like that, you got complete breakdown of communication. You got people making decisions based uh, based off emotions and everything. You know, you got all these things that are going on based off emotions, and some of them are true and some of them is not true and everything. But all of it, the whole purpose of it is to divide. It's to divide, y'all. It's to divide. That's it. The whole purpose of it is to do what? It's to divide. It's to divide. But yes, still there's God. Yes, still there's Jesus Christ with open arms. You know. Standing in the gap, knocking on your door, say, let me in. Proverbs um, chapter 3, verse 5 and 6 says, trust the Lord with all your hearts and lean not on your own strength, understand, but in all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. He said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. You know, and um. I mean, uh, here's another one. James, it says, is anyone sick of you? Let them call for the elders of the church and pray over them, anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer often and faithful make the sick person where the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven, be forgiven, promises. Um, uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. So Jesus speaks. He said, Do not wear, say, what should we eat or what should we drink or what should we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first the kingdom of righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. Promises. Um, um, Psalms 103. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives you? Begins all your sins and heal all your diseases. Who redeems your life from the pit and crown and crowns you with love and compassion to satisfy your desire with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle. <laughs> Promises. Promises, y'all. Promises. Promises. We're not going to be able to finish this. I got no Friday to do with this. But promises. Explanation based on the promises of God that he has for you, that he has for me, that he has for your children and your children's children, that he has for your friends and the people that he has even for your enemy. There are promises that they have not even tapped into and stuff like that. The Bible talks about that he can, he's the one that will make your enemy your footstool. You know, some people have to become my footstool and everything. And even in the process of the footstool, salvation is open to them so they might remember Repent of their way. Promises of God. The promises of God for you and me that are real in everything. Amen. Father God, we come to thank, say thank you for today. Thank you for your promises, Lord Jesus. Your, your promises that you that promise us that you will be with us always. That you will never leave us, nor would you forsake us. May that help allow us to stand on those things that are true. To stand on your promises and to believe and trust you, God. We pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, God. You know, again, you know their private prayers. You know everything about, about them. God, you knew who they would be and what, who they would not be while they was yet in their mother's womb. In fact, you even knew their name before them, their mother knew it. So, Father, we pray today, God, that you would sit in your mercy, your grace, your Holy Spirit, God. Begin to fix those things that are broken. Begin, God, to mend. Begin, God, to heal. Begin to deliver. Begin, God, to conquer. Begin to show your mightiness in all that you, you can, Jesus. But truly by your stripes, Jesus Christ, you say that we're here. We pray today, Jesus, you, Lord Jesus, would do something great and miraculous in every single person that's listening to the sound of this broadcast. No matter where they might be, no matter how rich they might be or how poor they might be, no matter what place they are, God, no matter whether they're a job or in their homes, or maybe they might be listening in the car, God. We pray today for them and their families and the people they come in contact, that a great awakening, a great revival may take place. 
place today, Lord Jesus. We know that we need you, Holy Spirit. We need you in every country, every continent, Lord Jesus, all across the world, Lord Jesus, even in the desert place, Lord Jesus, even in the place of the a field of sand, even in the place, Lord Jesus, no matter where they may be, where people might be alone, God, we are praying for that lonely place that you will come and reach out and touch them, even in that lonely place, Jesus that you will reach out and touch them even in their lonely place and shine a great light in the midst of darkness, that they would know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Father, today we pray today for everyone under the sound of my voice that you will send forth your way, your will upon their life. That they might not run to the left or or might not run to the the, the right, but go straight to the path path that belongs to you, Jesus. They will receive you unto themselves, Lord Jesus. And you will come and sit with them and break bread with them and teach them, Lord, and show them the mysteries and the allegories of your word and, and how much you love them so much, Jesus, that you would do great and miraculous things that's in their life that have not been done before. God, we pray today that you would do it for your name's sake, that you would get all the glory, Lord Jesus, that we would not share your glory, that we would not want your glory, but we would bow in a submissive way and say, God gets all the glory. But look what he did for me, and if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Holy Spirit, we bow and prostrate before you today, that you, Lord Jesus, would change the mindset of this nation that they will seek more of you and less after the things of this world, that you will change the mindset of the president and the mindset of the Congress, God, that they will care more about the things that you care about, God. We pray today, Lord Jesus, that even in the pulpit, from the pulpit to the door, and from the door to the pulpit, a great change may take place within the body of Christ. God, we pray for every apostle, every bishop, every pastor, Lord Jesus, every evangelist, every prophet, God, every teacher, the five-fold ministry, God, we lift up to you, because they belong to you, Jesus. So we pray, God, today that an activation will take place, Lord Jesus, that it won't never, ever have church as user, not like ever before, that a great awakening would take place, that those that are called by your name would do exactly what you said they should do, submit themselves into you. We do pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you for this broadcast. Hey, y'all, again, this is Reverend Ray on Friday Night Joy. Thank you for listening. Please share this broadcast. You can listen to us in a couple of minutes. Uh, from Blog Talk, probably the whole bro- bro- broadcast. Um, and go tell, check out our website page, of course, and check out things that, that God is doing. We're still trying to do a facelift on it. So pray for it, brother, okay? Amen. Um, uh, so do that, man. Don't forget about these wonderful men and women of God that, that come onto the broadcast and share their testimonies or speak the word, you know, or have guests on. These are some wonderful people, you know, um, that – uh, Reverend Penn and myself uh, work with and everything. So I'm grateful to every single last one of them. Check us out on WinChristianSpeak.com. God bless you. And we'll see you next Friday. God bless you. I love you much. Love you much.